But are you willing tonight to condemn white supremacists and militia groups sure. and to say that they need to stand down and not add white supremacy? Where did one of the most repeated racial epithets in recent times actually come from? White supremacist and its close corollary, anti-Semite, are weaponized terms that condemn their targets via symbolic invocation of cross burnings, lynchings, and Nazi party rallies. Indeed, at its core, white supremacy is a psychological warfare technique historically linked to academic research conducted in the 1940s by emigre Marxist scholars who fled Germany following the rise of National Socialism. In Search of White Supremacy, on this edition of the Memory Hole Blog Report. This is MHB Report, I'm James Tracy. The notion of white supremacy is perhaps the most heavily promoted political derogations of the era. It's strategically deployed as the rationale justifying the lawlessness of radical leftist organizations, such as Black Lives Matter and Antifa, both of which are funded by the likes of billionaires George Soros and Paul Strayer, and strongly supported by close to the entire American Jewish community. The notion of white supremacism is most heavily promoted by the Anti-Defamation League, and the Southern Poverty Law Center, both of which use highly emotional propaganda techniques identifying white supremacy with hate, hate speech, the Southern Confederacy, and World War II era fascism. The overarching theme promoted by the likes of the ADL and the SPLC and reinforced in academic projects like critical race theory is the Catholic and Protestant Christians of European descent are inherently, or more specifically, genetically, predisposed towards hatred and violence against racial and ethnic minorities simply by virtue of their appearance. European Christians are thus guilty until proven innocent. The line of reasoning underlying such political propaganda is then mobilized to deny such groups freedom of speech, assembly, the right to employment, even the right to buy and sell, while at the same time justifying violence against them. Make no mistake, it is an offensive rhetorical pogrom writ large against Christians, and it has been decades in the making. The modern historical basis of the notion from which white supremacy emerged can be traced to a single research project produced by a handful of radical Jewish emigres known as the Frankfurt School. In 1951, The Authoritarian Personality was published, one of several books in a series entitled Studies in Prejudice. The research project and book series was funded by the American Jewish Committee. Among the most prominent Israeli Jewish political advocacy and lobbying organizations in the world. The primarily Jewish research team hypothesized that American Christian families of European descent, with a strong paternal figure and conservative values, were inclined to support authoritarian political figures, movements, and modes of governance. Upon the study's publication, several fellow academics called the methods, conclusions, and overall social scientific objectivity of the project into question. Nevertheless, the authoritarian personality would become the most prominent of many studies produced from the 1940s onward by primarily Jewish scholars seeking to identify, harness, and redirect a relationship between European Christian culture and its self-preserving dynamic of ethnocentrism. As Frankfurt School historian Rolf Wiggershaus observes, the researchers argued that traits denoting the fascist character and mindset include, quote, a rigid commitment to conventional middle-class values, such as outwardly correct, unobtrusive behavior and appearance, efficiency, 
cleanliness and success alongside a contemptuous view of humanity." Unquote. Survey queries posed to interviewees in the study included statements like, the businessman and the manufacturer are much more important to society than the artist and the professor. Agreement or strong agreement with the statement suggests that you may possess a fascist, white supremacist attitude. Here's another. A person who has manners, habits, and breeding can hardly be expected to get along with indecent people. Again, agreement with the statement suggests a fascistic or authoritarian tendency, placing one higher on the Frankfurt School's fascism or F scale. An abundance of responses affirming such statements, many of which indicated favoring the then prevalent American middle class group identity, were classified by Frankfurt School researchers as pathological. Yet, as evolutionary psychologist Kevin McDonald has argued, the very characteristics towards group identity and allegiance that make a Gentile fascistic in the Frankfurt School's eyes are almost identical to those defining the Jewish people historically as an idea and a social phenomenon rooted in their own values and culture. This important blind spot was glaringly overlooked by the researchers, perhaps because it would have called the integrity and the intent of their entire project into question, not to mention highlighting their own ethnocentrism. With this in mind, which group is, in fact, authoritarian or supremacist, and which is projecting its own notions of superiority and privilege on its social counterparts? The constant drumbeat of white supremacy demarcates a specific group for disenfranchisement and violent persecution based on their appearance, their culture, and their religious practices. Where have we seen this? before. If you appreciate what we do in these video explorations, please consider becoming a patron of Memory Hole Blog at Patreon slash Memory Hole. For Memory Hole Blog Report, this is James Tracy.